Hello and welcome to another walkthrough video. Today we are going to be installing Zubuntu inside Ubuntu 2004. So you have Ubuntu 2004 installed on your machine and you decided you want to try out XFCE. Yeah, that's possible, but do you want to have the hassle of uninstalling everything, backing up your machine, uninstalling everything and starting again from scratch and installing Zubuntu? Well, guess what? There's an easier way to do that, and you can do it right from your very own desktop without affecting your files and your personalization as such. Let's give it a try. The requirements here basically is the terminal and a few lines in the command line. And that's uh, we need to install a package called task cell. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we open up a terminal, and the first thing that we need to do if I just increase the font size for you here, is install task cell. To do this, we type sudo at install task cell. T-A-S-K-S-E-L. Press enter. Enter in your password. And we say yes to the dependencies. And then once task cell is installed, we can now go ahead and install the Zubuntu desktop. To do this, let's clear this view here. To do this, we now type in sudo task cell install Zubuntu hyphen desktop. Press enter. And you can now see we're about to go through the installation process of installing Zubuntu on top of Ubuntu. Now, a good thing about doing this is that you already have Ubuntu installed on your machine. All you're going to be really doing now is changing the desktop environment, or at least adding the desktop environment for Zubuntu on top of Ubuntu. And all it will really do is install the XFCE 4.14 desktop. Now you can see here we've been prompted about changing our uh, desktop manager over to LightDM. So for that I'm just going to OK this. And because it is XFCE, it's advisable to go with LightDM. Now I'm on an AMD processor here, so therefore it's installing the AMD64 packages for me. If you're an Intel based one, then of course it'll be installing the i386 for you. We'll just let this go ahead and complete its installation of the packages. And then we just begin to follow some of the uh, wizardry, which will uh, follow up after this installation here. OK, so we have now reached the end of the installation, and we now have the Zubuntu desktop installed. Now, we need to log out, reboot the machine, and log in again. And this time, we select Zubuntu as the main desktop environment. Let's go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, I don't have any capturing uh, software or uh, capture capabilities on this desktop here, so I will show you in the form of me videoing this on my phone. Okay, so here we are now, booted up into the Zubuntu desktop. You're now looking at XFCE as its desktop environment. So before I start doing any real personalization with this, let's just check that I've actually still got my applications installed. So for example, if I look under internet, I can see I still have Chrome installed. I've got my Telegram and my Thunderbird. Under my multimedia, I've still got my favorite radio programs uh, in installed here, so Shortwave and Spotify and Tuner, etc. So that's all still there. Under Office, I've installed the uh, Liberate Office 7, but through the installation of Zubuntu, unfortunately now it has brought through Liberate Office 6. So because 7 is not yet part of the packages, 
uh, it has now downloaded uh, LibreOffice 6 so I will need to do a purge on those uh, a little later on and uh, uh, read those uh, because I like to have the uh, latest versions of the, the LibreOffice suite here. Uh, so just to prove that one if I go into LibreOffice Calc now uh, you will probably see now that I'm running on version uh, 6 so let's just say OK to that tip there and if I go to help and about Libre uh, you can see now we're on 6.5 uh, 6.4.5.2 here uh, so that's not version 7 uh, so if I now go back into my office and click into uh, calc on version 7 has that loaded yet? I think it's probably loading for the first time uh, we just close down version 6 in fact it looks like version 7 probably did load uh, it just loaded over the top of my existing window there so let me just try that again there we go and incidentally I'm liking this new look fantastic right so if I go to about now you can see we're running LibreOffice version 7.0.0.3 and that's the correct version at the time of this recording here today uh, and incidentally uh, it's my understanding now that LibreOffice are calling this the personal ed edition or something like that I can't remember what it is anyway either way I'm quite excited about using version 7 of LibreOffice so uh, we'll give that a try in my workflow this week okay so now having a look at this I can see that I've got on my desktop here some uh, kind of grayed out looking folders which suggests it is looking at some hidden or possibly uh, network file shares on my desktop environment here so if I just go into do a right click and go into desktop settings and if I just go under the icons tab and if I just scroll down the default icons I can see I've got my home, I've got my file system, I've got my wastebasket uh, but I've got removable devices uh, checked here so if I just deselect this you can see now that they've disappeared from my desktop I'm not really a lover of seeing those uh, uh, on my desktop as if I want to access those removable drives then I'll just go and uh, get it from the file system. So let me just do a right click and ask it to arrange my desktop icons that now tidies that up nicely there. Uh, I've got nothing in my waste basket at the moment so all that's left for me to do really now is to just, uh, just see really uh, if I can install some personal applets to the panel so one thing I first like to do is install the show desktop icon uh, currently there is there is no evidence of desktop being in my panel so if I type in desktop I've got the show desktop here I'll add that in that now puts it up here in the top right hand corner where I want it uh, I'm going to install my weather applet and there we go add and you can see now that let's put that in there I will move those uh, applets uh, in a moment. Uh, the next applet that I like to uh, include, if it's got it, if I just scroll through the list here, uh, let us see, so uh, I might need to install the XFCE add-ons, so let's just take a look here, yep, so they're all missing, so let's get those added in now. So let's load up the terminal, so Control alt t and if I just zoom in a bit on this one for you, uh, we're now going to install some of the XFCE add-ons. So this is known as goodies. So to do this, it's sudo at install XFCE4 dash goodies. Enter. Enter your password. Oh yes, <laughs> it does help if I get this around the correct way. It's because I'm fast typing without looking down at my keyboard. Okay, so now it's going to ask us to install some new packages and we'll say yes to those. Incidentally, you can trust these packages because these are just the applet add-ons. And it's worth noting now that even though we are in the XFC desktop environment uh, using Ubuntu, uh, we are now in Zubuntu, which is on top of Ubuntu. Now if you wanted to switch between Ubuntu and Zubuntu all you need to do is log out and then choose Ubuntu from the uh, panel in the top right hand corner there you just click it and you select uh, GNOME desktop or Ubuntu I think it is uh, known in there. Uh, so with these installed now so I should be able to just exit out of this 
and if I go back into my panel and I go add new items I should see now more in my list which I do here brilliant excellent okay so we've got a CPU frequencies and uh, governor here CPU graph uh, disk performance monitor free space disk check we've got a generic monitor uh, let me see network monitor yep so this is definitely now installed the goodies which is fantastic so one of the uh, panels that I like uh, Atlas that I like to use is one called a sensor plugin so if I add that in there now uh, yeah that's fine I just exit out of those that's fine once I've configured it then you will never get those messages pop up again and you can see here if I just move the camera to the right slightly here uh, we've now got the sensors option appeared here in the top right hand or top right of your screen here uh, so if I click onto this and if I do a right click and go into properties for this uh, applet uh, you can see now that uh, I've got the sensor types uh, drop down list here so I want to now show the temperature of my CPU so for that I'm going to select K10 temp C3 and you can see I'm currently running at 44 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's quite high, but I am doing a video recording here at the moment. I'm going to click show to enable that, and you can now see that the uh, temperature gauge has appeared here properly in the top right of my screen. I am going to now just change the name of this and call it CPU, and then uh, just press enter. And there's some other properties that you can do with this. So you can show the title text, uh, or just show progress bars or uh, tachos, tacos or uh, you can even show the labels well I might not want to show the label therefore if I deselect this you can now see that it's just disappeared to 38 degrees Celsius here um, I'll leave that on for the moment but I don't want to show the title that's the one thing that really niggles me so I'm going to take that away now so that's absolutely fine I'm okay with that uh, I want to show one line of text uh, cover all panel and rows and columns, that's fine. Show units, small horizontal space, and that's absolutely fine to keep it that way. So I'll OK that. Now if I just right click on the panel again and go into properties, uh, no, apologies, uh, panel, then uh, panel property uh, preferences, uh, it's here now where I can change the ordering of those applets. So if I come down to sensor plugin here, and I'll just click the up arrow a few times because I like it to appear in the start of my list so if I do that there now here we go so it's always there uh, the weather applet I would always like to display before the show desktop and I'm quite happy with the positioning of the clock there so to of course now uh, tell the weather applet what my location is if I just have that highlighted there I can click the cog wheel here and it's already detected that I live in Rochester UK uh, that's fine that is the area I want to choose it's not the exact town or location where I am located uh, but it's the closest to it and it's already self populated the latitude and the longitude so let's check the units and we just check there on Celsius and you're happy with the ambient uh, temperature settings here that's fine under appearance uh, it's currently using liquid for its icon view we're absolutely fine with that. Uh, how many days forecast do you want to see? Well, five to me is a bit too much, so I just like to see three days worth there, I think. Uh, round values is always ticked by default, but if you deselect that, then you'll now see that the temperature gauge is actually showing you the exact ambient temperature outside currently right now. And the scroll box here, we're currently showing temperature, wind direction, and wind speed. Uh, you can select more from this drop down list if you want to. So, in my case here, to show rain, I'm going to show precipitation. Click that and then click add. And then that will add precipitation to the list here. So, I like to show that before uh, wind direction. So, I'm just going to move that up the list. So, if I select precipitation and then click move up. Now it will show temperature, precipitation, wind direction, and wind speed in that order. Uh, I like to show the wind direction after the speed, so again, I'll just swap those orders around there. So I'm quite comfortable with the way that I've now configured that weather applet, so I just click close now. Now, I'm going to leave this like this for now because the, the, there is a lot of personalization that you can do with XFC, including downloading and installing your own themes. Uh, so for that, uh, there's more videos out there on uh, YouTube and more, more places where you can go and actually uh, find out how to do that. Uh, in fact, I've got a few videos in my original walkthrough of uh, Zubuntu uh, where I show you how to do that. 
Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm just going to close this one down. But what I am going to do is change the window theme to Greybird so that I get my dark theme come through. So to do that, I need to go into the menu and go under All Applications and then select Appearance. From here, I'm going to select Greybird Dark. That now switches my XFCE to a, uh, a dark mode. But again, you can see that my window has not fully gone dark. And the way that we change that now, just by leaving this window open here, we can go to the um, Start menu again. And this time, we go under All Applications and we scroll down the list, or you can type the word Window. And what we're looking for is Window Manager. And it's here now that I can select Greybird Dark. Watch up here and you'll see this magically now change to a nice black and white view. Perfect. That's exactly how I like my Zubuntu environment to be. Now you can see here you've got a variance in styles. You can go with Yarrow Dark. That has imported its way through from the original uh, Ubuntu. Uh, so you can keep that look and feel if you like. Uh, it hasn't changed the uh, window uh, appearance because obviously I've chosen Greybird for that one there. But again, if you wanted to do that one, uh, you can go this time under Recently Used if you've already opened up the Window Manager and there you will find it. And then here you can select another window view of your choice. So for example, we've got Numix, Moheli, Cocody, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Which actually is quite quite warming, actually. I think I'll keep that one for now. That looks nice. And uh, let's just see. So we can change the title font as well. Now, uh, I don't think I've installed it yet. No, I haven't. Okay. Um, so it uses Noto Sans Bold as its default uh, uh, font here on the title bars. Uh, you have the option to change it here if you wish, if you prefer another looking font. Again, you just click there here and then you do a search for your font name. And if you would like me installed another font, uh, then you can ser uh, obviously uh, search for it and uh, use that one there. I I like to use uh, Fira Sans actually. And the reason behind that one is because one, they use it in Pop! OS. And two, it's actually quite pleasing on my eye. So this Noto Sans really is uh, more of a uh, a kind of Google uh, Roboto uh, font there. So uh, uh, that's just default. But again, you've got the option to download and install your own fonts and just uh, tweak it how you like. So there you have it. We have installed Zubuntu on top of Ubuntu. Both are now running Ubuntu Base 2004 LTS. So there's nothing more that I need to do here except run a few system updates that I'm being prompted for here. And uh, you can see here I've got, uh, I saw it a while ago in my notifications. If I click here, oh, it's gone now. But it did appear that I had some uh, packages uh, to update. So I'll go ahead and do that through the usual system app update. So, uh, if you've got any questions regarding the uh, update that we just did here, then do by all means get in touch. I'm at Robin Just over there on Twitter. Uh, you can drop me a line via my website there over at digitalrobin.net. Uh, you can catch me uh, every uh, month or so uh, on the Big Daddy Linux podcast. And uh, I'm uh, a regular contributor on the uh, Europe edition there, so uh, you can join us for that there. Uh, that happens on the first Saturday of every month, so just search for Big Daddy Linux Europe Live and you'll find us there. Uh, otherwise, um, I thank you for taking the time to watch this walkthrough, and as always, I'll catch you again in the next one. Take care now.